<clears throat> Good morning, church. It is October 22nd, and I am sporting the wonderful, colorful Hawaiian outfit. Um, I always enjoy Hawaiian shirts, and I got a chance to live in Hawaii when I was 19 for a little bit, and that was uh, a wonderful adventure. And uh, But it was nice to get back to the mainland for sure, being a Southern California kid. I was used to a lot of people, so going to a small island of Kauai was quite small. But hey, you're in the early morning Devo with Bo-O, and it's time to get our minds focused on the Word this morning. So I'm not sure how you're doing or where you're at, but I thank you for joining uh, in this uh, time. So 2 Peter chapter 1, we are in verse 12. Where Peter says, so I always remind you of these things. And what things is he reminding them of? He's reminding them of these virtues, right? Goodness, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness leading to love. And we're going to see why Peter's reminding them of these things. And just just so you know, I think it's really cool this morning just to... Uh, think of that idea of reminding you of these things. Um, you know, it's so important that we always are reminded. Um, I don't know about you, but I tend to have kind of be a space cadet at times where I could hear something and then I totally can just kind of space it a little bit. And uh, as I get older, I find that happening more and more actually, which is kind of funny. But uh, reminders are so good to me uh, in particular, um, and especially to encourage other people. I think of reminding other people. You know, ministry is a lot like just sharing the same things over and over and over. And, you know, there's nothing really new in our sharing. It's funny, but uh, in the groups that I've taught over the years, um, whether it's uh, junior high, high school, college, uh, big people, church, um, uh, small groups, uh, whatever kind of group you can think of, recovery groups, it's always the same things that you share. And this is what Peter's getting at. Add to your faith, goodness, goodness, knowledge, knowledge, self-control, self-control, perseverance, perseverance to Godliness, godliness to brotherly kindness, brotherly kindness to love. Those things never get old of being worked on. The answer is always the same. You know, um, there's different methods sometimes, like um, ways we can kind of go about things, kind of drilling down, as they say in accounting. You can kind of get down into kind of the nitty gritty of your heart or what's going on. So there's different methods, and uh, people call them therapies that can be used. But really, it's always, uh, the big picture is always the same. You know, aloha to you, Pam. Uh, let's go surf, eh? Uh, that would be fun. That's it, like a Canadian saying that too, huh? Let's go surfing, eh? I don't know if you guys caught that, but, um, but you know, it's it's always about reminding, right? Just letting people know, hey, let's work on this. Let's work on that. You know, what do we need to do here? What do we need to do there? Let's draw close here. Let's work on these things. So reminding people around you, you know, and that's the good thing. Not only do I need reminding, but, you know, we all need reminding, you know. And so never feel like you're repeating yourself uh, and never, never try to get bored in the repetition of saying the same things to people because it's it's probably true that you you're saying the right things because when they're true then they're they're the right things to share i mean and so sometimes you might feel like hey i'm just repeating myself but man praise god you know jesus said the at different times said the same things um you know there's two there's a sermon on the mount and there's a sermon on the plain and he said a lot of similar things in those messages but those are things that we need to hear. And just another thing, uh, another kind of reminder in the in the Devo this morning about this idea, I'm going to remind you of something that Peter's reminding us of. And that is, when you hear messages, 
And think of how many messages you've heard, okay? So if you're a Christian and you're listening to this, right, you're probably going, hey, Bo, I've listened to thousands upon thousands and thousands of sermons. Well, I tell you what, if you listen to the same pastor over and over and over, you're going to hear the same things. You're going to hear the same stories, the same illustrations, everything like that. And, you know, you can you can take those two ways. You can look at it like, or you could probably take it more than two ways, but let's just talk about two ways. You could take at it, take it as, man, man, this is a bummer. That guy keeps saying the same thing over and over and over. He's just like a, just wind him up and he just goes. He's like a little, you know, he's just a one track mind. He just kind of goes in that direction, can't stop. And, and you might get frustrated in that. And you might be like, man, I just, I got to go someplace else because he just says the same thing. You know, yet he's teaching the word of God. He loves Christ. He's totally teaching doctrine right on and everything like that. Just, just, you've been listening to him a long time and he repeats himself. And you, but you can get frustrated and you can just be really irritated by that. Or the second way is you could take it by the idea of what Peter's saying. I want to remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. So you could take them as that way too, is just going, hey, you know what? I'm being reminded of these truths so that I can be firmly established. And maybe that's what's happening and why it's important that we listen to the same things over and over and over, is that we need, we truly need as human beings to be firmly established, you know, because it's easy for us to kind of be interested in the new and in this, uh, you know, something that's fresh and everything like that. And man, I understand that there's nothing wrong with hearing things from different perspectives and I totally grab that, you know, but you know what I'm, you know, what Peter's kind of getting at here and where I'm kind of driving this to is like, don't let frustration sink into your heart, you know, because frustration, you know, just leads to like a bitterness. And really what that is, is that's just a selfishness in your own part a lot of the times a self-centeredness that's taking place instead of being able to really get your eyes on the Lord and just be like hey God maybe you want to establish me in these truths that are being shared and I'm sure like when you hung out with Jesus it's uh, I'm sure he was sharing things over and over and over and he was just drilling it into the disciples heads and it's not like all of them got it either right I mean, even when he got on the cross, everybody bolted. And so John seems to come back and hang out with them, hang out with his mom at some point. But uh, on the whole, in the Garden of Gethsemane, whoop, feet treat me good, man. We're out. They were running. And um, they were running like they were running from the cops. And I remember doing that when I was a kid. So, <laughs> you know, um, you know, but they were, they were go, going, they weren't there, you know, so... Um, you know, the, the point is, is that, you know, we need to be reminded and established, firmly established in the way we should go. And he says, I think it right to refresh your memory. As long as I live in this tent of this body. So this body's called a tent here in First Peter chapter 2. And it's also in, in uh, I think it's uh, Second Corinthians chapter 5 that Paul, the apostle, talks about our body being a tent. And I don't know about you, but a tent can't remember everything. Um, uh, a tent can't seem to hold up, and it's not very firmly established all the time. So it needs a lot of reminder, a lot of repair. And reminding is like getting repaired, right? It's like you forget something, you get reminded of it. You forget something, you get reminded of it. Just like a tent. A tent gets ripped, it has to get repaired. Gets ripped again, it has to get repaired. And so... You know, as long as you live in this tent, this body, Peter says, as long as I live, I'm going to be reminding people. So, hey, remind people, you know, remind people today. Um, and that's always great. I love it when um, 
you know, we say to people, you know, in our families, especially, we just go, hey, I love you. You know, after you see them, you give them a hug and you say, hey, I love you. How many times have you said, I love you to your kids? I mean, hopefully a lot, you know, I know, I know I've said that a ton to my kids, but um, I think of how many times I've said that to my wife, <laughs> you know, I love you. And, you know, but what's cool is every time Sylvia says, I love you. I, she says, I, I love you to me. It's like, I'm always like, yeah, dude, that's awesome. Even though I know that, you know, she got my ring on, you know, that I gave her. I, I mean, I know she loves me, but it's such a beautiful reminder. As I live in this body, I'm going to remind you. Um, does someone need reminding today? You know, can you remind someone today of something um, that is going to help them? Something that that revolves itself around goodness, knowledge of God, temperance, you know, help, helping people get healthy, helping be, be a healthy mind, right? Body, spirit. You know, when I talk to the pro hockey players, I always tell them, hey, you know what? Yeah, you could, you know, I, you, you know there's people here that their job is just to work on your body. And to get your body strong, and that's not my job. My job is to work on your spirit. And, you know, but are you, are you doing that? Are you reminding someone of that, helping them with that? How about self-control, helping people in self-control areas? You know, and that's a reminder too, you know, something we could remind people of and help them with, right? Remind people to persevere, man, to, to keep going, you know? You know, don't let the enemy just keep you down, man. Um, you know, we all stumble in many ways. John chapter, or James chapter 1. We all do. We all biff it in major ways. So many things today that we could stumble in. So many different areas. You struggle with lust? Tell someone. You struggle with greed? Talk to someone about. You struggle with, uh, you know, whatever it is, you know, uh, things. Just get with people on them. Per get up persevere, move. It'll, it'll move you towards a godliness. It really will. Remind one another to be, have brotherly love with one another and remind people just to simply have kindness and, and to grow in that wonderful kindness with each other. So you see what a cool little start of this second part of Second Peter, right? I always want to remind you so that you may be established on a firm ground and that uh, you grow in the truth. And, and Peter says, hey, as long as I'm in this body, I'm going to keep doing this. Because I know that I will soon put it aside, he says. As our Lord Jesus has made clear to me. Isn't that interesting? The Lord Jesus has made it clear to Peter what's going to happen. Right? And you might want to look at John chapter 21, verses 18 through 19, to maybe check out what that's going to be like, what that was all about. But it seems like Jesus had a little little chat with Peter about uh, the end of Peter, so uh, his body anyway. And it says, because Peter says, hey, man, he made it clear to me. Isn't that cool? What would, you, what would you think of that if Jesus said, hey, hey, Pam, hey, Bob, hey, Sue, you know what? This is how it's going to happen. This is what's going to go down. You know, boom, 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 boom. You know, <laughs> how would you react to that? I'd be like, whoa, Lord, I don't know if I wanted to know that. Um, and it says, and I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember these things. Isn't that cool? Peter says, these things I am reminding you of, you know, and I'm going to make every effort to establish you guys. You know, that's the job. And that's the job of the minister, um, you know, is always not just official minister, but your ministry, right? You, um, what your ministry is. Your ministry is, is before you depart the planet that you establish, right? You make every effort to see, right, that they, people will always be able to remember the things that you taught them. That you will help, you will are discipling people. Work with the same person for five years, 10 years, 20 years. Don't jump around. Don't get from one person to another person. Don't be that bing, 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 bing. Don't be going all over the place. 
one minute you're with this person, the next minute you're with the other person. No, you work with a small group, longevity, right? Long term. You know, there's people that I've worked with for long terms. You know, I remember when I first met Dave Robson. I remember when I first met Peter Martin. You know, uh, different people. Um, you know, you work with people long term. You get into uh, good discipleship ministries with those people. And you stay with them, help them grow, help them be established. So um, that'll help you in your life too. Um, so that you, you're going to have to work through whatever bugs you got to work through in discipleship. Because sometimes it's much easier just to go bing, 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 and kind of jump around. Because it, you don't have to really grow yourself. You don't have to face certain things. But for those of you who have worked with people for long periods of time, you know there's trials and difficulties and things like that. But what you're doing is you're establishing um, the truth of God's word in that relationship. And that becomes the foundation over longevity. And all of a sudden, and that foundation just becomes thicker and thicker and thicker and good and, you know, and things like that. Me and Pastor Scott have had a relationship now for 20 over 26 years, I think close to 27 years now. And um, and what a radical <laughs> discipleship relationship that is, um, you know, uh, for him him to me. And uh, those kind of, you know, but those kind of relationships are super important. I know if uh, our pastor ever were to go see the Lord, man, I know that he has established his word in me. And uh, no, shadow, no shadow uh, of a doubt there. I have heard him teach messages over and over and over. I've heard him say the same things repetitively. I don't know how many times over the years. I used to do all of his production early on in the first 10 years of the church. And, um, and now his son does those, Sean. But, uh, I rem you know, I remember doing all the radio production for Sunrise and different things. And um, and I would hear the same message like repetitively over and over because you're doing all the br production of it to get it ready, ready for the radio. And I remember thinking early on like, man, I, man, I know everything this guy, like, like everything that's coming out of his mouth, what he's saying. But that's the good part is it was able to establish me and it continues to establish me to this day. So, you know, uh, Scott will never leave my, my heart, my mind, my life. But that's how... That's how discipleship ministry should work, you know, and I hope that makes some sense and you guys kind of get that. So that's that's kind of how um, Peter's talking, though, you know, so I think it's totally beautiful. It's amazing. I wish, you know, it, it, you know, you always, you know, I'm sure Peter wishes he was a better man before Jesus, you know, like, you know, as he says to Jesus, Lord, go away from me. I'm a man of unclean lips, you know, and I think there's a part of that discipleship where at times you look to the person who disciples you and you go, man, I wish I was better, you know, to honor you in a better way. And, you know, but that's the beauty of a discipleship relationship. There's a lot of vulnerability. There's a lot of just teaching that goes on in, um, in those kind of close relationships. And you see Peter, um, Man, he got close with people after Pentecost, the people that heard him teach, and he uh, stayed with them and uh, it just ministered to them. And this is his departure letter. So, hey, you guys have a great one, okay? Have a wonderful day, and we'll pick up uh, Lord Willing, verse 16, on the Word of God tomorrow. So take care. Bye-bye.